Okay guys, what's up? Country Reefs 88 here. I wanted to go ahead and show you guys about uh, a little project I've been doing um, yesterday. I didn't get really a chance to go ahead and upload it. I tried it on my phone, um, but for some reason YouTube Capture, uh, the app wasn't uploading it for some reason. But this is my uh, this is my project I had yesterday. I'm um, ignore the <laughs> poster right there. Um, but this is my water making and water mixing and water changing corner. I have all my tools over here. I just set up my RODI unit from Bulk Reef Supply, this, this great company right here. Bulk Reef Supply, amazing company to go through. Um, I'm happy so far with it. Uh, it's a five stage system. You've got your sediment filter, your five micron CTO, two carbon filter, and then you got your uh, 0.6 micron uh, one carber on the on the right. Then you have a reverse osmosis up top. Then the last stage is going to be your DI container, and I pretty much just put it on a board um, that I had from uh, from the stand build out back, just because the studs in this wall were kind of off. So I wanted to make sure I had something solid to screw into. So what I did was I took the board and I screwed it into the studs in the back, wherever the studs were. And then I went ahead and screwed the RODI unit into the board, thus allowing me to have more of a, a stable uh, wall or board to, to drill into. So let me go ahead and explain a little bit right here. Um, first off, huh, my son's throwing a fit, sorry about that. I have my water pressure. Uh, gauge right here is showing let me scoot over a little bit real quick sorry about that guys my water pressure gauge right here is showing 75 which on BRS's uh, uh, website they say anywhere from I, I want to say like 60 to 80 is what they told me is is optimum for your RODI unit and it's really really good um, that way you're not wasting if you go anything below 70 or 60 you're wa basically wasting your cartridges, um, and it's gonna just—it's not gonna put out the uh, the best outflow for you. And anything over seven or anything over eighty is gonna hurt your RODI unit and maybe blow a gasket or or something something worse. So you, you just want to make sure you're in between that range. Um, they do sell pumps if you're below sixty. They do sell pumps for your your system. But the pump, all it does is it, it creates more water pressure, um, getting the water through the RODI unit faster. Um, and like I said before, if you don't have the pump and you've got low uh, water pressure, you are going to be wasting your, your cartridges and have to uh, you know, order more and get more. So I do suggest uh, making sure your water pressure is good um, before ordering one so that you know if you're going to need a pump or if you're not. So basically what I have over here in this corner are my garbage cans over here. I have three holes over here, um, one just to run the uh, RODI water into there, um, so that, and another two are for exhaust so that uh, air does allow to come out. And then when I'm not filling those up to go ahead and uh, do a water change, all I'm going to do is fill these uh, small five gallon um, containers up right here, and that way I'll, I'll I, I'm sorry, that way I will always have RODI water on hand and then just in case because I do have an auto top off that I need to put RODI water in there um, so I, that way it's always on hand always ready um, I do have my buckets over there for water changes as well and as you can see in here I do have some water going right now I've got a, a return pump in there a real pump going right now mixing up water that I'm going to go ahead and do a water change pretty soon I'm doing a 20% water change uh, the only reason I'm doing so much of a water change is because my diatoms have come in a little bit and I've added some corals and I just want to make sure I've, I've done a bunch of testing on my water guys so don't worry um, I'm keeping a close eye on the, the parameters right now um, I've, had the, I've had the tank up for a month with the old stand. Had it recycling, had it going through, had live rock in there, had a big outbreak in the in diatoms, and then all of a sudden I had to just switch stands because I made the new stand. And when I switched stands, everything went over to a garbage can. 
and then from a garbage can and went back into this tank or back on the tank and onto the new stand. So pretty much I've had this up and running for a month, month and a half now and the parameters or the water test I just did yesterday morning were showing that I was having a small, a small cycle basically. The ammonia wasn't too high but it wasn't too low. So I kind of figured I was going to have something like that with me adding a little bit more sand and with the new rocks in there which I'm totally fine with. I, I figured it would. It's just diatoms. It'll go away. Um, I also have another coral right there. This is a hammer coral. If I can get a good picture of it. There we go. And a hammer coral. I glued the bottom bases onto small little uh, uh, rubble rock. There's a lot, and on this one too. Right on the bottom of a, a rubble rock, and I just put it in the sand just to give it up off the sand. Also, I have a Manipora that was that was given from me to, from a friend. Really cool Manipora. I forget the actual uh, name of it, but it was his favorite. Um, also, he gave me some unidentified Zoas. Um, sorry about that. There we go. So really, really overall, pretty cool. Um, keeping a close eye on it though. I'm doing daily water change, not water changes, but water tests to see where everything is. And I will always have water, extra water on hand, just in case if I do need to do a emergency water change. So I feel comfortable on this. So I don't recommend it for everyone. But like I said, my tank has been up for a month and a half now, and I do feel comfortable right now adding this. So if you don't feel comfortable, don't add any corals to your tanks. Also, I want to do an update on the WP40s, they are doing amazing right now. Um, no complaints. I went ahead and I put Velcro on the back of it. I think it was supposed to come with Velcro, but I don't think they sent any with, any with it. So I just went to my nearest uh, craft store, got some Vel uh, Velcro, taped it to the back of the side of uh, this unit right here, and then onto the wall. So all I have to do is very strong Velcro too. All I have to do is that, it comes right off, and just put it straight back on. Sorry guys, don't mean to make you sick or anything. Also, on top of that, the converter that they gave me let me zoom out real quick. The converter they gave me, I also put a uh, Velcro on the back of it and stuck it to the wall too. This will allow for water to not uh, drip on it um, and saving my fish or my tank or my WP-40s from getting electrocuted or shorted out. Like I said, everything's going pretty good. Um, I do have one more update for you guys and I apologize. This right here um, the, the actual 40 gram breeder that was given to me by a friend, um, I didn't really know what to do with it, and I didn't really feel like driving all the way back out there just to give it to him, because um, he just gave it to me anyways. So I'm going to use it, I'm going to start up another tank um, pretty soon, as soon as I get this one up and, go, uh, up and running and up and going uh, smoothly. This one's going to be my wife's tank, she wants seahorses and starfish and corals and Trying to tell her all the, the basics of everything. Uh, she says as long as I help take care of it, she, she'll want it. So whatever whatever gets the wife into the hobby too, it's always a, <laughs> always a plus. So um, she just, she this is all her aquascaping. I just helped her put the, the big heavy rocks in there for her. Uh, sands in. No water right now because I just, I used some of the foam. That spray foam has actually lasted. This entire time, I was very surprised because everyone says it dries up and it's, it's not usable. But as long as you take and clean the straw and make sure the straw that uh, comes out or that the foam comes out of, as long as you keep it clean and put the lid back on it, you can still use it, which I was very surprised. But anyways, I gotta let it cure for 24 to 48 hours, probably 48 hours just to be on the safe side because I used a lot on this one. Um, looks really, really cool. She did a nice job. Um, she wants to put one more rock right here in the corner but she wants to make one herself. I told her it was going to take a while, but she, she didn't really care. Um, but yeah, that's that's her that's her setup right now. I'm going to put it like a, I think I'm going to just put a 10-gallon uh, sump refugium that I have already made. 
it's outside. I was just going to put it down below. Um, I have doors already made from my 20 gallon long that I had down here below. So I'm just going to go ahead and fit that in there down below and, and uh, screw it in so that we have doors and a cabinet underneath. It's just going to slide underneath the desk. So yeah, that's the, I'll keep you guys updated on that one. Uh, she's pretty excited uh, and so am I. So uh, we'll uh, keep you guys updated and uh, if you like my video, I really appreciate you guys liking, it, liking all my videos. It just shows me that all this hard work, people appreciate it. And also if you guys want to see more videos in the future, go ahead and uh, subscribe. It's a, just a easy click down below, it says subscribe. Um, I appreciate it and uh, that way you guys stay in tune um, to all the updates, all the videos I make. There's tons more to come. And I promise there's bigger and better things coming up my way in your guys' way. So I promise everything will be better in the future. So just uh, follow along. Thanks, guys. You got a cousin who's telling you something that doesn't have nothing to do with the loving that we're in.